hopefully they can play better against this Arkansas squad. And ho uh, just a, not a lot of practice time for this Vanderbilt team. And today they're coming uh, without uh, a full complement of players as well as Dylan DeSue, Quentin Malora Brown also unavailable today. Uh, so a rather small lineup for the Vanderbilt Commodores against this Arkansas team that has been um, in SEC play up and down. It's been feast or famine for the Razorbacks as we take a look at Vanderbilt's starting lineup today brought to you by Farm Rich, Scotty Pippen Jr., DJ Harvey, Jordan Wright making his first start of the year, ninth of his career. Miles Studi and Cleavon Brown is trying to get healthy. He has missed six games this year. This will be his fifth playing. Vanderbilt will space you out, shoot a lot of jump shots. If they shoot it well, they will score a lot of points and play well. If they miss shots, it puts a lot of pressure on their defense. Well, the starting lineup for Eric Musselman now in his second season at Arkansas looks like this. Brought to you by Farm Rich, Jalen Tate, Desi Seals, Moses Moody, who's been awesome. Justin Smith is battling through some injury issues, but he seems to be getting healthier. And Connor Vanover, the seven foot three. I don't even know what position to give him. Uh, step out, three-point shooter, but the post player, uh, he's in that starting five tonight as well. So 2 nothing Arkansas lead as the Arkansas Razorbacks trying to get some of that, keep that momentum going after that great come-from-behind victory against Auburn on Wednesday night. Of course, Vanderbilt had their game postponed their last two midweek games have been postponed. Their only game was last Saturday against Tennessee. Got beat by 20 in that one as Arkansas gets off to a good start here, leading it by four. Four to nothing as Moody, who has been sensational this season for the Razorbacks, gets him going. Sixth in the conference in points. Yeah, a good start for this Arkansas squad. Maybe the way they finish the Auburn game, especially second half. More aggressive at cutting, attacking the rim, not settling for jump shots. Desi Sills got the first bucket on a layup. Outstanding he was against Auburn in the win. And then Moses finishes it up. If they can be solid on the defensive end, Coach Must said they want to push the basketball, put a lot of pressure on this Vanderbilt team. Again, they do not have many players suited up to play to that this afternoon. Justin Smith. Misses inside, but batted it back in play. Three-pointer from the corner, no good there by Moody. Loose ball, and the Razorbacks will reset. They leave Vanover open. We'll hand it off to Moody. Shot clock inside 10. Vanover fires, connects. Connor Vanover at seven foot three has hit 15 three-pointers this year. And they've got to get his shot back to where he's stretching out a defense. He has struggled as of late. Last four games, he's only got a total of five points. Early in the season, he knocked in a lot of jump shots, took a lot of bigs away from their defensive score assignments. And if he can do that, stretch a team, it makes Arkansas tough to guard. Boy, outstanding start for the Razorbacks. They're up nine to nothing. Where will Vanderbilt go for their points? Scotty Pippen Jr., second in the league in scoring at 21 a game. Well, and people don't quite understand how valuable DeSue losing him is. A good drive by Pippen Jr., but DeSue in SEC play, Dave, 17 points a game, 50% from the field, 50 from three, 89% from the free throw line. You take out that, and all of a sudden you're searching, and defenses like Arkansas maybe can cover Scotty Pippen up, if Jr. up more. We'll see if they can find ways to score against this Razorback squad. Eric Musselman, a couple of coaches in their second seasons with their respective schools. Sixth year overall at the college level, of course, longtime professional coach, 141 wins. He has won 20 games every year in the college world as a head coach. Pretty good start for Coach Musselman. Jordan Wright to the logo. Nice pass to D.J. Harvey. Good set by the Commodores. Yeah, they've got to have uh, Harvey be terrific on the offensive end. He's got to be more consistent. Starting to score the ball better uh, lately. Started Had a slow start to the season. But if he can get on the board early, maybe he get, gets his confidence going. Moody might have got away with a little travel. Regardless, Vanderbilt has it. Here's Wright back the other way. 
Vanover tried to get that secondary block, couldn't do it, and that's six straight for the Commodores to cut this to three. How quickly they get back in the game, three buckets in a row. One of the things Coach Musselman talked to us about this week is this club has got to get off to better starts. They have fallen behind big time in some SEC games in the first half and really wants his team. He's changed things up. Uh, can't afford to fall behind like they have and expect to rally like they did against Auburn on Wednesday night. And there goes the three-pointer from Jalen Tate. And, Dave, it's hard to say that the, the possibility that, that the other night the win against Auburn saved their season because that may be stretching a little bit too much. But when you lose by the amounts they lost to the two games before, then you're down 19 in that first half. Um, it did not look good for Razorback fans as I'm watching that game thinking, okay, this team's really struggling. But unbelievable comeback, unbelievable grit by Coach Muss's team. And then that could propel you on another good run as they had the start of this season. Moody tied up, get it to Vanover. We'll reset the offense, but shot clock down to four. Here's Tate, a little fall away, and he is fouled on the way up. He will have some free throws coming up. Talking about those starts, a good one. To he was 8 of 10 from the free throw line. And if you lose at home to an Auburn after already losing on the road at LSU in Alabama, uh, it would have been tough for this Al or this Arkansas team to kind of keep going forward. You win that game. And you take a look at what their schedule was, their first four, six games, four of the six, were on the road in SEC play. So you've got to protect home court. Maybe they can get a win today, and all of a sudden they're back on, on a more positive note. And in that NCAA field, which we know they are right now, but you don't want to teeter on the other side. So a five-point Arkansas lead. Scotty Pippen. Picked up that foul before we went to break, so the only player with Vanderbilt that has a foul to this point. Matter of fact, only two fouls called in this game. Great nice pass. cut to the basket. Justin Smith lays it in. Arkansas looks good on the offensive end. They're moving, they're cutting, they're spacing this Vandy team out. Again, Vandy's not a powerful team inside. Already a couple offensive rebounds by the Razorback team, and they've scored at the rim. Hey, John, five assists on six made baskets for Yeah, they're, they're moving, and they're cutting, and they're sharing the basketball. And any time a Vandy big underneath leaves, the bigs are cutting. They're finishing right at the rim. They're already six of nine from the field. Seven-point lead. Here's Tate. Kicks it back to Smith. When you watch Arkansas on the offensive end, the key is movement. If they get stagnant and on the dribble, they're easy to guard. If they cut, move, move the basketball, they find better shots. Desi Sills, that one's off the mark. There's Justin Smith for the putback. Great position for Justin Smith, the transfer from Indiana. You give uh, Sills an assist, or is that kind of a rebound? You know what? Because I'm a good guy, I give him the assist. Now, you, okay. maybe not so much. <laughs> hey, I, hey, I know he's a shooter, so I don't think it was a lob pass. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Exactly my point. <laughs> They'll take the two either way. Yeah. Levon Brown, and he leaves it short. Brown's a guy that Jerry Stackhouse told us he's got to be more aggressive with the shot. He's taken a couple here in the first half, missed them both, but... He's trying to battle his way back from some abdominal issues. Brown tries to block the shot of Sills, but it got him with the body, so Desi heading to the free throw line. Man, I'll say it again. It's all about ball movement. That ball is swinging side to side, and then it's the aggressiveness of Desi Sills, like he much did in that second half in the Auburn game. He attacked. He went to the bigs, see if they could get body to body, and he's an outstanding free throw shooter. Desi has played in every game the last two plus years. His 80th straight game with the Razorbacks, averaging 12 points a game. And he's really made that steady improvement. You see what he did on Wednesday with those 22 points. He loves Auburn. Matter of fact, his two best scoring games have come against Auburn this year 23 in the first one, 22 on Wednesday night. But his point per game average was five as a freshman, 10 last year. And now he's.
bumped it up to 12 per game. Yeah, I remember last season at the end, he averaged nearly 15 points a game in the final six. He had 20 against Vandy. If I go back in Nashville the first night of the SEC tournament, which was the last night of basketball, the next day everything was shut off. But he's got to be confident when you had 20 last time you played the Vandy team. You're coming off a good game against Auburn. Uh, he had great meeting with Coach Musselman. Coach Musselman said, hey, they had a great meeting one-on-one, -on -one, just talked about a lot of different things, cleared his mind up. And, again, when he led the team to win against Auburn, uh, I think he's going to have a great stretch here for the next couple weeks. Well, that's a great sign for Vanderbilt as Maxwell Evans knocks home that three-pointer. He's just a 70% shooter from behind the arc, but got that one to drop. Loose ball into the hands of Isaac McBride. Didn't know how much we'd see him today. He's been a little banged up. So Max Evans provides a little spark from behind the arc. Five minutes coming up right after that, uh, right as uh, Obina was trying to get up and gather himself. So Obina now will head to the free throw line, and he hasn't exactly been there much this year, but he's been perfect three out of three. So at the very end, after Obina stands up and starts to run. Tough angle, but uh, then he goes down. I mean, the officials Trusted. saw it. We saw it. Yeah, we saw it. So Vanderbilt will take the point. They trail by five. Jordan Wright, ball fake. Tried to get it inside to Obina. Does so, and he knows what to do with it. Yeah, nice pass. Jordan Wright's the kind of guy, too, that can score the basketball. He had 18 against Kentucky. He can stretch the defense out. So, again, most of the Vandy players can stretch the defense if they get an open look. Scotty Pippen Jr. is not in the game, but the scout report on him is he can't always buy his ball fakes. He's just one of the best at getting guys off the ground, whether it's to pass it or to score himself. Tough shot off the mark from Isaac McBride. Obina on the floor as Vanderbilt was getting out rebounded before that last timeout, nine to one. So Jerry Stackhouse says, "Well, I'll try to fix that with the big fella in the middle." So far, it's worked. Hard to rebound a ball through the bottom of the net, though, as Moody well, buries another one. Yeah, Moses Moody, not only one of the best freshmen in this league and one of the best players in this league, but one of the best across the country. His numbers are just fabulous. Nearly 17 points a ball game, six rebounds a game. Uh, shoots it nearly 40% from three, which you saw that just a second ago. And Trey Thomas can shoot it. He's kind of been sporadic, but we know when he gets hot, he can really get a team back in a game or extend the lead with that three-point shot. Yeah, Thomas is quick on quick, outstanding on the defensive end. Nice pass inside to J.D. Note. He struggled, Sonny, against Auburn. Went 0 for 5 in just 10 minutes of action. Two points in that game. And let's think on how he got that bucket. It's cutting. And Jalen Williams, who's 6'10", but he handles the ball well for a big, uh, can shoot it. But uh, he can see the floor and the bounce pass allows teammates easy layups. Obina with the high screen. That one's knocked out of the hands of Thomas. Arkansas back the other way. Here's Moody working on Evans. Batted around. Boy, quick ball movement. Moody can't cash it in on the three-pointer. I liked his odds on that one since he'd hit the one before from the same spot. That foul will be against Arkansas. That'll send right to the free throw line. Moody picks up the foul. That'll be his first. Hey, tonight on the SEC Network, this should be a good one. Number 19, Missouri taking on 6th ranked Tennessee, 8.30 Eastern time. That's coming your way from Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville. The Vols have won the four of the last five and six and five, won the last four and five of the last six against the Tigers. Matter of fact, you have to go back to uh, Sonny, I believe, 1972 for the last time Missouri won at Tennessee. You can catch that one, of course, on the ESPN app. That will be a really good one. Tennessee, 70, of course. 72? 72. That's a long time ago. 
They didn't play many games before uh, Missouri got to the SEC, yeah, but uh, Tennessee drilled the Tigers in their first matchup. But Missouri's playing well. They've won their last two. We can see these teams as we take one more look at the nice dish underneath Note to Justin Smith. That's worked a couple of times here in the first half. But, Sonny, I think in this league this year, it, it's 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 pretty balanced, right? So there are going to be some times like Tennessee right now didn't play very well their last game. So it's one of these – you're going to have these peaks and valleys. You know, Alabama's the only one that's been really unscathed at this point, right? Yeah, so far. I mean, I think, Dave, probably all of us uh, are surprised by some of the margins of victory some of these games have gone. Yes. I mean, some of the no spreads doubt. just are shocking. But uh, as all the coaches are dealing with uh, some practice, limited practice, some not practicing, uh, it's probably understandable. But I think many of the coaches, much like Jerry Stackhouse said, are looking for consistency and those that have younger teams that have not been able to practice as much as they would have in the past have struggled more than the veteran squads well jd note knocking home that three he has been along with moses moody their most explosive three-point shooter both those guys now have 29 made threes on the year and the razorbacks at 65 percent from the field vandy's defense is last in the league at, at field goal percentage they give up opponents 46 percent from the field big shot there from dj harvey who averaged 10 points four boards last year at notre dame tough turnaround shot from jalen tate Rebound yeah, as to well as, as well, Dave, as they've moved the basketball, there's probably no sense taking that kind of difficult shot. Three guys on him, challenge Tate at the top of his jump shot. But he Bad got the pass steal. by Pippen. And a foul against Evans. So, and I think that's what they were trying to determine if that was a flagrant or not. And so and Eric I don't, Musselman, I, I, yeah. and it looked like was that who was in the corner? Was it J.D. Note maybe that was trying to trap him? But uh, anyway, the first the first play about it was the Arkansas defender was out of bounds trying to steal the ball. So in the old days, Dave, you could what they call you would clear them out with the ball or your elbow or whatever. Right. Different rules today. Scotty Pippen Jr., very quiet, only two of four from the field. Arkansas has done a good job. DJ Harvey. Harvey gets to the logo and going to call an offensive foul against the Commodores and DJ Harvey. Yeah, pretty much every time you lower that shoulder, I mean, he's probably okay, okay, and now you lower great defense uh, by Moody uh, Moses moving his feet just how you're supposed to do it and the offensive player Harvey simply lowered that shoulder knocked him down good call Justin Smith kicks it back out to the perimeter so Arkansas mm -hmm. three two two three matchup zone trying to keep the ball out of the middle and Arkansas finds a way to get it to the middle and a nice Basket from Devo Davis. Yeah, that's the reason why you want to keep it out of the middle. There, there's so many things you can do when you get it in there. A lot of scores can score there. They can make great passes. How about Max Evans? Count the basket. The senior out of Houston, Texas. Well, we've seen Evans shoot it from deep. Has not been consistent there this season. But good enough to make it on a three. And so when you crowd him, he's good enough to put it on the floor and finish with his left hand. Good body control. Not an easy shot. But going to your right, shooting with the left off the window. And so Max Evans will toe the line for a moment, looking for point number six. He'll have team high honors, but he can't convert. Evans just 54% at the line this year. Here's Smith. Smith taps it around a couple of times. Finally taken out of there by Wright.
Pippen. Nice pass as he's falling backward. Count it for Brown, and he'll head to the line. You know, Pippen Jr. is a tough kid to match up with. You stay in front of him. We know he can shoot the three, but he's good off the bounce, and he draws a lot of attention because of the way he scores the ball when he gets inside. Three Razorback jerseys around him, and he delivers a terrific pass to Cleavon Brown. Cleavon is just trying to find a, a path to just being healthy. Of course, last year missed a bunch of games, had major knee surgery. Last 23 games had to miss, played only nine. Starting this year, unavailable for a couple of games. Then has some abdominal strain issues, can't get on the court. It's just been a, a, a just a mess for Cleavon, and they need him. They desperately need him. Yeah, Coach Stack said yesterday to us, it's his senior season. If he's healthy and you're out there, we need some production. Here's Pippen the other way. Off to right, slicing to the basket. He trips and stumbles. It'll belong to Arkansas. I like the idea, and here's why. Pippen Jr. knows that Wright can take it off the bounce. He loses it this time. Good active hands, and he stumbles. But what I liked about it was Pippen Jr. gave him the ball early to make a play. He didn't wait for him to slow down. He had him on a full speed. Now he's got to be able to control his body and keep his footing. We'll step back from J.D. Note, misfires, tapped around. It will belong to the Commodores with 5.07 to go here in the first half. Vandy shooting 55%, Arkansas at 50%. Yeah, well played. Neither team's got a ton of turnovers. Three by Arkansas. Vandy's got five, six. Boy, nice ball fake by Moses Moody. He lays it up and in, and Moody now has nine. You know, the, you, the more you watch Moody play this season, obviously some got to see him play in high school. Most of us didn't, but you see that he's got great body control, shoots it so well. He's got great size at 6'6", can handle it. Such a valuable piece for this Razorback squad this year. Tapped around, and that's what Moody can do for you right there. 14th in the conference in rebounds, somewhat overlooked because he's 6th in the league in scoring. Active hands that time by Tate, and watch Moody control the defense. And what I mean by that is he's playing to his pace, right? Defenders are coming at him, a little ball fake, gets him off the feet, makes for an easy bucket. Hey, tomorrow we start an afternoon of women's basketball at 1 Eastern, noon Central, with number four South Carolina scoring off against LSU. Then Florida takes on Ole Miss. Number eight, Texas A&M. Missouri will follow that one. All games right here on the SEC Network and, of course, the ESPN app. That'll start at 1 Eastern tomorrow with South Carolina and LSU. So the Hawks have pushed this out to eight now. Pippen thought he drew some contact, looks right at our official, and no whistle, and back the other way come the Hogs. Yeah, I'm surprised, because that's what Pippen Jr. does, gets guys off their feet, and he got the defender off his feet and drew contact. You could hear Coach Stack in the background saying, that's a foul. Here's Pippen the other way. Breaks out of the pack and lays it up and in. Tough to defend when he's in the open floor. Again, he plays at his pace. Catch and shoot from Note. That's no good. His pace is picking up a little bit. Who does that favor? Well, both teams like to run and push. It favors who's getting out ahead and who's not getting back defensively. The Razorbacks like this pace. And at home, Vanderbilt likes his pace. They like to space you out if they can push it. They don't like the turnovers, though, and they're adding up for them. They didn't get back. It's Moody lays that one up and in. Moody now with 13 here in the first half. Here's Pippen going baseline, but saw the 7-3 Vanover and pulls up and misses, but fouled in the process by Jalen Tate. Player. But I I've seen him enough times. I've done three or four of these games. He, he has total control, and he doesn't seem to get out of his rhythm. Um, 
as far as the pace of the game. They can try to speed him up. He doesn't speed up. Where he has struggled in SEC play because, as, as Mike Anderson, the former Razorback coach, used to say, now we're into family. Everybody knows each other. So in the last, since the start of the SEC, he's only 3 of 18 from the three-point line. He's struggled outside because that's where people are guarding. But he puts it on the floor. He's terrific at assists, 5.3 assists, second in the league in assists. So he's taken a leadership on this in this sophomore season that I think is one year ahead of where I thought he'd be. Well, four straight games, he's produced 18 points a game, which is a little bit below his average at 21 per game. But, uh, you know, without Dylan DeSue on the floor, he's going to have to have, I think, for them to win this, he's going to have to have a huge offensive game. Yeah, Dave, you're right, because DeSue at 6'9", stretches that floor. Like I said, 50% from three-point line during SEC play. He takes all the bigs away, and that always would allow Scotty to penetrate, maybe get a bucket inside. We saw him score a ton of points against Kentucky inside, making layups against the bigs from the Wildcats. Here's Pippen out on the wing. Trying to hit right with it. Shot clock at 10. That one might have been partially blocked out on the perimeter by Jalen Tate. Tate, 6'6", long wingspan, got a sh piece of that shot from Scottie Pippen. Yeah, that's the toughest part if you're a 6'3", 6'2", guard like Pippen. Um, when a 6'6", guy who's as quick as you can give you a little bit of space and then challenge the shot when you go up, it's tough and a great defensive play by Tate. Vance Jackson Jr. checks in and hammers home a three. Razorbacks 5 of 12 beyond the three-point line. Out to a 10-point lead, largest of the day for Arkansas. That one is blocked, and then a foul in the process. I think Coach Muss has to be happy, and maybe not with the call, but how the Razorbacks have not only defended the ball handler, but challenged every shot outside. I mean, their quickness gets back to every shooter. That foul on Note, his first. Tonight on the SEC Network, this should be a good one. 19th ranked Missouri, 6th ranked Tennessee, 8.30 Eastern time, 7.30 Central. Of course, Thompson Bowling Arena will be the site in Knoxville. Balls have won the last four and five of the last six against Missouri. This one will uh, be a tournament type game, right? Yeah, I think a possession really good by teams. Yeah, you, you go possession by possession uh, towards the second half. In that first meeting, the guards of Tennessee were quick. Uh, the bigs were quick. Uh, it was one of the most impressive performances we've seen all year with that first matchup against Mizzou. Smith can't handle it. It'll belong to Vanderbilt. Tennessee was a two seed before their loss this week. Meanwhile, Alabama, who just totally destroyed LSU in their midweek game, they've bumped up, according to Joe Lenardi, as a two seed. So the SEC still hanging in there with a number two seed out of the conference. Well, what Alabama is doing to the league right now, it's early, but their last three games, uh, they've won by a combined 81 points. And it's just they've destroyed people. And Coach Musselman, after they got beat, was disappointed how Arkansas lost to them. But then after he saw how Alabama beat LSU, Coach Musselman said, well, maybe it don't feel so bad. This is just right. how Alabama's playing at this particular time. Wide open three. Jalen Tate buries that one. That's his second three today. Give him eight points. Terrific pass. Another good shooter from outside. Tate shoots 36% from three. And the key to this Razorback team, again, offensively, if the ball moves because of their quickness off the dribble and the way they can shoot the basketball, then they're dangerous. If it sticks, they're not so dangerous. But this afternoon, this has been impressive. 13 assists on 16 made baskets. Hey, after you made a three, right, did you run back and stick your tongue out all the time? Did you, <laughs> is, that what you, is that how you played the game? I backpedaled. Let's see. If I'd have done that, I'd have been right on the side with my coach. <laughs> yeah. Stor Storm and Norm Stewart, he wasn't. Uh, uh, come on here, have a seat. 
Now, I know you didn't have the three-point line. As a matter uh, of fact, you just missed it, right? You missed it. Was it the next year it came in? Well, my senior year, uh, many of the leagues were experimenting, and I played in the old Big Eight, and seven right. of the coaches decided we won't uh, experiment this season. We'll wait till next year. Now, who, who was that one coach that agreed to do it? I think my guy thought it would be yeah, a good idea. I, so yeah. we, <laughs> I played with a big fella inside, Steve Stepanovich, who was an All-American, right. second player taken in the draft after our senior year. And uh, I think the other coaches thought, well, let's just wait one season. <laughs> uh, didn't slow you down, though. Tried to survive, Dave, just trying to survive. Yeah. Boy, Arkansas's offense doing it here in the first half. Vanover and company that's Arkansas has played nine guys. Eight of them have scored, led by Moody's 13. Vanover now has five. Here's Wright. Evans in traffic. Spins around the cylinder and drops in. One final shot here from Arkansas at the horn, and that one's off the top of the backboard, but that'll do it. Arkansas puts up a 45 spot through the first half. The, the key, the fact, I thought Arkansas got some easy baskets, some run out, some easy baskets, and when you look at the stats, um, again, Vandy's got to find a way to somehow slow down this Arkansas team. Wasn't a horrible first half, as you said. It was. I mean, you look at the numbers for Vanderbilt offensively, and most nights you'll take it. You shoot 45 percent, put up 35. Now you get the first basket out of the locker room to Scotty Pippen Jr., and they're going to have to get him going. But without Desue, it's just hard. It's really hard for Pippen. Yeah, and again, he, he's just a terrific player. He's a good scorer, one of the best rebounders in the league. But I've seen, I've done games where. Scotty Pippen Jr. will do more work the second half and try to score more. A lot of times in the first half, he tries to get his teammates involved. We already saw the first possession. He took it hard off the dribble and took it right to the rim. And this is when he's aggressive because he kind of plays at his pace inside. Guys think they've got him locked up. You think you've got him blocked. Usually it's a burst of speed. He's got great control with his body. Has a wide variety of different shots around the rim. And as Eric Musselman put in his scout report, he will ball fake you to death. You've got to stay on the ground. Another basket here by Vanderbilt. They could gain some serious confidence. Evans, deep three. A little too far out. Probably one of those shots that Jerry Stackhouse was talking to us about. When they go back and look at tape, he just kind of wonders, what were you thinking? And it leads to an easy layup on the other end. Yeah, and, and, and lack of communication getting back defensively. And if you don't communicate this Arkansas team, the way they're playing today, the way they played the second half against Auburn, they will carve you up. They're moving the ball, hitting cutters, getting wide open, and they like to push it. Right, left that three short. Arkansas on the run, back the other way. Nice little move there by Jalen Tate. Tate now up to a dozen. Boy, good move by Pippen Jr. off the backboard. Yeah, what he does is he uses the ball fake to just get the defender up just a little bit and usually to the side of his body, especially if it's on the left side. Then what Pippen Jr. does is he shields that defender with the left side of his body, frees up his right hand to shoot it in off the glass that last time. Four white jerseys attacking the glass. Vanderbilt was minus 10 in the rebound department in the first half. Not a good pass from Pippen Jr. That leads to Sills out the other way. Tries to get a little contact in the layup. Batted around, and Pippen Jr. will come out of there with it. Pippen second in the conference, over five assists per game. Had two in the first half. Right misses. Moses Moody stops, fires, connects. Dave, I'd say the pace of this kind of game probably helps the Razorbacks only because Vandy's down enough bodies, right? Don't have enough bodies to come in and play. Arkansas wants to push. Scotty Pippen, they put a lot of pressure on him, the Razorbacks have, and he will wear down possession by possession if there's not a timeout. Pippen can't get it to go. Rebound to Justin Smith. 12-point advantage. Largest of the afternoon for Arkansas. They started the game on a 9-0 run. 
That one's off the cylinder. Evans off to Pippen, reverse layup. There is Evans for a nice follow as he hangs in the air. Justin you know, neither Smith team the getting back. Uh, neither team getting back defensively. And again, when it's a wide open game, there's three Razorback jerseys on defense and standing and watching. And allow Evans to just slide in and get the rebound. Nobody even knew there Evans was behind him. Either it's uh, not looking, not paying attention, or thought uh, the shot would go in. Here is Smith at the free throw line. Boy, what a story he is. Boy, times have changed, right, in terms of surgical procedures. This is a guy that had ankle surgery on January 1st. Fifteen days later, he's back on the court playing. The uh, graduate transfer from Indiana where he played three years, averaged ten points, five rebounds last year for the Hoosiers. Missed those four games, and they are glad to have him back. He is one of those do-it-all, fill stuff a stat sheet type guys that you just, they're invaluable to you, right? Yeah, he's solid numbers, almost 11 points, seven rebounds a game. You know, he missed the game, he missed the Mizzou home game. Then they traveled to Tennessee, Georgia at home at LSU, those four games. They went one and three, right? That's the value that he brings to this squad. Ah, Ooh, and then he flushes one on the alley-oop. Nice break by the Hawks. Good ball fake by Wright. He lays it up and in. David is a offensive game, correct? I mean, the, the defense on both ends, both teams allowing the ball to get to the paint, get to the rim. Bad pass there from Tate. Got hung up in the air. Evans one on two. Will kick it out to Pippen Jr. Fires short. Gets his own miss. DJ Harvey got a good clean look and buries it. If you're a fan of either team, what you're thinking, if our team can get on about a 6-8-10-0 run, right? That's both squads are right there. Which one can defend for three or four possessions and get on a run? Arkansas could put the game away, or does Vanderbilt get back in it all the way? There's the follow from Justin Smith, an outstanding offensive rebounder. He's having a terrific game. So Arkansas's lead is 11. Um, didn't know what the situation was going to be. They ended up postponing their midweek game this past Tuesday, uh, or past Wednesday, I should say. And now they're on the floor, able to field the team, but they're missing a couple of key players, Dylan DeSue and Quentin Malora Brown. That's a little bit short, but I'll say this, Sonny. Despite what's been going on with Vanderbilt, there have been opportunities here for Arkansas to take this lead to 15-18, but Vanderbilt's making it tough on them. Yeah, I think Vandy's played well. Again, can they uh, defend well enough, and can they rebound well enough? Uh, Malora Brown and DeSue both would be on the defensive end, help you on the rebounding edge, uh, at least around the rim defensively, and DeSue then on the offensive end. But... Vandy keeps hanging. Arkansas just keeps dangling. It's always, you know, above 10. And, uh, again, which team goes on a run? There's going to be some little run here. And, and many of the times for Vandy this year, it's the run's been against them. You mentioned the game at Tennessee. Tennessee went on a 15-2 run the second half and widened that game up, and the game was over. They were supposed to play Tennessee. Last week, or about two weeks ago now, on a Tuesday night, Rick Barnes and Tennessee bust over to Nashville in the hotel, and it wasn't until late that night, Monday night, that they found out that they weren't going to play, so they got up in the morning, busted back, and that was supposed to be a makeup game because they were supposed to play Missouri originally on that Tuesday, so the league trying to work the schedules out the best they can, but... You just don't ever know. And, you know, that's what Jerry Stackhouse was telling us yesterday, um, getting ready for this game. is like he doesn't even know. Like when his phone buzzes, he's wondering, if is it good news or is it bad <laughs> yeah, news? Right. But it's going to be yeah. some news. Yeah, when he, talked to us, he talked to us yesterday morning. He wasn't sure which guys would be in or not in. 
And we got messages later in the afternoon who was going to be out. God, the world in which we live now, right? I mean, it's... I'm interested to see how the league, how you make up or how they do some of the postponed games. Uh, there's a week when the season ends in March that there's no Saturday scheduled before the tournament. Will they have one game made up or could you play a Thursday, Saturday somewhere? It'll be interesting to see which teams can make up any of the games. Well, if there's one thing we've learned about Southeastern Conference in the last six months is they'll figure out a way to manage that schedule. Yeah, better well, than they're, the best. they're the best. They're the best. Yeah. And uh, the way they handle the football season. Bandy still driving it, still pushing it, getting it around the rim, staying tough enough. Coach Musselman's going to talk to his guys about, hey, if we can get a few stops, we can get this game over with. Dave, you know, I'm always looking for something, somewhere, somehow, mm -hmm. for you just to think about. So Vanderbilt averages 54 people at a ball game because it's only family. That's what they do. So I looked up Arkansas's fewest people that they ever played in front of, ever, was 110 back in 1997, Christmas Day, a game against Murray State in Puerto Rico, 110 people. Shooter Pat Bradley was the leader of that 97-98 squad, but did 110. So if the official number comes through today below 110, this will be a historic uh, less viewers ever in a gym for Razorback basketball. And you know what? I'll be honored to have been a part of that. Anything <laughs> that I can be a part of history, uh, I'm going to take we'll, it. We're going to write that down. Here's who's right. broadcasting that day. Boy, Arkansas's offense for the most part today has really been clicking. Not not as clicking as well as the Auburn Tigers today. Oh, my goodness. My with goodness. triple figures on the road. And this is why the Razorbacks have been so good. They're the, the ability to go off the dribble and the number of guys that can put it on the floor and then to move the basketball and don't get stuck. They have, uh, Vandy's had a tough time guarding it all afternoon. You know, this, this week, Coach Musselman talking about he's going to really shorten up his bench. It's going to be a seven-man rotation. I, you know, he's played nine guys today. And eight of those nine have played. Three of them are in double figures. The only guy that hasn't scored is Jalen Williams. The success for the Razorbacks this year, they've got five guys that average double figures. So they can spread the love around uh, night in, night out, different guys, different games. A little scramble on the floor. Arkansas's lead is a dozen up hip and Last four games has produced 18 points a game, but second in the league at 21 points a night overall. But Moody, when you start looking at some mock drafts for next year in the NBA, he's really, they have an eighth pick all the way down to the 19th pick, but still that's a solid first rounder for Moses Moody, who came out of high school as a top 50 prospect, a four star. Well, scouts, uh, scouts like what he can do, and they, they like the size. When you're a six, six guy and you can shoot it, and you can handle it, and you're strong enough to rebound, uh, the NBA loves you. Well, Eric Musselman will love that shot from Tate as he buries a three from the corner, and the lead is now 15. And that is the largest lead of the afternoon for Arkansas. Off the mark from Miles Studi. Studi's had a, a solid freshman season quiet this afternoon but uh, I saw him have 16 against Kentucky averages just below nine points really got a good size at six seven good feel for the game shot clock down to seven but Desi Sills off the window lays it up and in and here's that run you were talking about looks like it's going to favor the Arkansas Razorbacks as they push it to 17 you get that feel that if you keep moving uh, in a Razorback uniform, teammates going to find you sometime, somewhere in that shot clock. 17 assists on 27 baskets for the Hogs. That's been impressive. Uh, Vandy's had no answers on the defensive end. Now they're going to have to try to find a way to pick uh, whatever pace they can try to get, get some buckets. Moody with a reach-in foul. That'll be his second. Talking about the NBA and whether or not Moody is a guy that will certainly um, consider the NBA after just one year. 
in Fayetteville. But some of the guys are in the NBA currently that wore the Arkansas uniform. Patrick Beverly, Gafford, Isaiah Joe, Mason Jones. Mason Jones playing extremely well at the next level. It's not surprising to any of the any of us who watched him play in a Razorback uniform. Watching Bobby Portis the other night from Milwaukee and uh, tell you what, I, I've always been a fan of his. I Man, I love the yeah, way Bobby yeah. Portis works. Every day, right? It was every yeah. day, every, you know, coaches in college talked about his work ethic and he does the same thing in the NBA. Makes it easy to root for guys like that. Yep. Pippen. Lost the handle. They're gonna. They're gonna say he's knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to Vanderbilt. Thought maybe he lost it on the way up, but it's active hands by Desi Sills, and that ball landed in. But they're going to give it to Vandy. Studi trying to find somebody, but he found the wrong color jersey. Desi Sills the other way. Big hop step. Nice pass underneath. And there is the 18th assist of the day as Tate, the recipient of the nice pass. You know, Tate has a great feel also. Uh, grad transfer from Northern Kentucky. Been around the game enough to know how to play and uh, new teammates this season, but he, he's got a good feel for them. And for what Coach Musselman needs. Vance Jackson Jr. hammers home that three. His second. All six of his points from behind the arc. And a bump foul. Pippen will head to the free throw line. You know, we showed you some of the guys uh, from Arkansas that are in the NBA. Of course, you know, never really got to see Darius Garland get it going. Got injured early. We saw Damian Jones quite a bit. Luke Cornett was so outstanding. Saban Lee, boy, another guy that works so hard. Easy to root for him. And Aaron Neesmith, unfortunately, injury saddled him uh, early last year as well. No telling what would have happened with Vanderbilt if he's on the floor. But pretty good list of guys in the NBA right now from Vanderbilt. Well, you take Garland and Neesmith, both uh, lottery picks. The only school that has uh, two lottery picks the last two years uh, that high. So... You know, we didn't get to see enough of Aaron Neesmith last year. He started the season, had some big games early, then he got hurt. We didn't see much of Garland, as you mentioned, but he had a couple 20-point games early in his career that freshman season. Then he was out. But they are playing well at that next level. You know, Jerry Stackhouse talked to us about Vanderbilt and, and their recruiting, and he feels like he's got guys on the hook that can really help this program out. But he says, you know, just we need to start winning games just for the mentality, just for – guys understanding what it takes um, and they're working hard uh, he says it's not from a lack of effort but the bottom line is we got to start winning games and getting that winning culture here well and it's got to be frustrating for him because he's a winner right he was a great player great coach at every level uh, one of the best players ever in the NBA and in college basketball you see the foul there another good cut by Moody going to the basket but he wants to build a, a culture um, he's got to have guys that, that are, this is their second year with him, those that have been around. Again, there's eight new faces, but those that have been around, they've got to build the culture that he wants to build. And it's not one that's just based on talent, but based on on how much substance they have as a basketball squad on both ends of the floor. This season, obviously, it's tough. Uh, we've already talked about the COVID, everything that's going on, and with all the new faces they have. But, yeah, they... In order for them to win games, I've had them a couple times. Dave, you and I had them when they played Mississippi State. They made 10 threes in that game. They made 10 at Kentucky, had a chance to win that game. Um, those are the games offensively they're in it. Uh, the one thing they've struggled on, especially in the SEC play, is on the defensive end. And a bumping foul there. Are they going to count the? Yeah, they're going to count the basket. Well done by DJ Harvey. Drew the foul from Justin Smith, and he'll try to complete the play at the line. This is actually good defense. Kind of never leaves his feet. Nothing goes on. Uh, give Harvey credit by putting pressure on an official. Once there was body contact, it looked like Justin Smith might have had mostly ball there, but uh, it was a great finish play by Harvey. 
Harvey has 14 points, one shy of Pippen Jr. Here's Justin Smith. Try to break that trap. Moody can't get it to go. Tapped around. Sills had it. And a foul on the way as Tate will head to the free throw line. As we used to say, Slater, Missouri, where he grew up. Didn't he? Uh, did, did he almost come to Missouri? Was he thinking? He should have. He should have. I, I Whether don't he was or not. He should, right. Well, he went to Notre Dame. He's a year younger than right. me. And Joe and I were teammates in the 1982 World Cup team. Yeah. Great friend of mine, and Joe went to Notre Dame. When he transferred, we all thought, those of us at the University of Missouri, he's coming to play for us. And we had a big man, Steve Stepanovich, again, the number two draft pick in 1983. We thought Joe was coming. And then Joe thought, well, wasn't sure he and Steve would play together. And I wish I'd have known that before because I'd have gone over to Slater, Missouri, and said, no, you guys will be fine. We'll put one on one work side, one out. on the other. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have had another, I would have had another guy, Dave. I just said, just rebound and throw it out to me. You, you guys will be fine in there. That's right. It would have been great for you. <laughs> uh, nonetheless, I think it all worked out for Big Joe. Yeah, it did, and he'll be on that call tonight. Hey, how well is Jeremiah Tillman playing for the Missouri Tigers? Yeah. He's been terrific. Uh, different dude, isn't he? He is a different yeah. guy this year, and I don't know what clicked with him, but he's always had the talent, but it has all come together for him this year. Yeah, and I think you give Conzo Martin and his staff credit. Uh, Jeremiah's worked hard. He, he's a great athlete, runs rim to rim, can do a lot of things, isn't overly comfortable just posting up only. And I think the coaches have figured out a way to get him the ball, different opportunities, different chances, let him dominate a couple minutes here, a couple minutes there. And probably the biggest thing is most of us have, who have watched uh, the SEC the last few years, he's not been in foul trouble game by game. Right. And, and that when he's on the floor, Missouri's a different team. Well, that'll be fun in Knoxville tonight, Missouri and Tennessee. You suppose uh, Tennessee had a few tough, couple tough practices after their trip yes. to Gainesville? <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice from Cleavon Brown. Follow up off the backboard. Cleavon with two baskets. And you four know, in the, today. in the old days, when you got back from a trip from Gainesville, flying in, you probably would have just had to do the gym, right? They didn't have right. rules on hours. You probably would have headed to the gym with the coach, and you'd been there for a couple more hours after that performance. Even six minutes to go from Nashville. Arkansas trying to even up their conference record at 4-4. Four and four. So here's what Eric Musselman's looking at now. Now, they're up 17. Game's not over, I know that. But can his guys continue to play with a big lead and push it higher? Or do they get complacent? Is a concentration level not as high as it should be? And every coach we talk to talks about the concentration level. It was interesting. There was a question to uh, Eric Musselman if he ever coached against Stack. And he kind of brought in his father. But he said nobody coached Tony Dawson, Stack's half-brother. And he said he was the greatest scorer he's ever coached in Rapid City that never got to put on an NBA uniform. And, and, and you know Tony Dawson from Florida State as oh, an yeah. alum you are. He was remarkable at finding, he wasn't the biggest dude, but he would always get layups. I mean, it was nuts how he would get to the basket. I, I've never seen anybody like it. You kind of, uh, there's always guys like that, right? That you think, well, he can't score in there because he's not big enough. He can't get there, but they do every game. I say this, nobody ever said that about me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's what they said in your church league. They said, hey, you got to contain him, get a hand in his face. He'll get you to the paint, spin you, lay it in on you. Uh, boy, I could have only Have you wish. retired? Are you retired? I have. Well, they oh, retired okay. me, my buddies. Oh, okay. Had okay. enough. They quit I was saying, I need, is that what you're saying? <laughs> basically, because I kept showing up saying, I need I need buckets because i got to talk about this on the air. I need possessions. I need you guys to help me out. And they were like, enough of this. We're done. So <laughs> they, they told you the wrong place, right? Yeah. Wrong day, wrong place, wrong time. Right, right. You know, I was uh, at uh, Peachtree Road Methodist, but, you know, thinking that's where our game was. But it was actually down at Dunwoody Baptist, right? Yeah, so. you know, yeah. Hey, you can't. You, you, you get in the church world. The Lutherans will do one thing, Methodists throw something, then the Baptists come in. I mean, it, it's a there's a fight there. 
Uh, Just don't get the pre- hey, don't get the Presbyterians involved, and then it's all trouble. <laughs> Uh, good times in the Atlanta Church League, for sure. 81-64, Arkansas having a good time on the road trying to win back-to-back games. They started the year 9-0. and And then once got into league play and things just didn't really go their way, of course, you, you touched on it, four of the first six, five of the first eight on the road. Does it make... Sills will swing it around the perimeter. Shot clock goes into single digits and a foul out on the perimeter as Jalen Tate is fouled. Tate having a great game. 21 points. He matches Moody in that department. Also, how about Tate with eight assists and four rebounds? How about his day? Well, he's been fabulous. And and again, I said it earlier, he's just got a good feel of what he's doing on both ends of the floor. When he offensively, he he again plays at his tempo. And when you get guys like that that are successful, as you said, 21 points, season high, eight assists, so he's two away from a double double. He has had a couple double doubles this season. You take a look at the assist leaders in the SEC. Wheeler had the greatest pass uh, Georgia could ever ask for the other night on the inbounds yes. pass to, to to beat Kentucky. Back up to a 19-point game. Good ball fake by Evans. Not great defense by Sills as he leaves his feet. Now Uh, now that he's back, he's healthy, looks great, moving well. Uh, Another uh, addition to this Arkansas team going down the stretch. And it certainly helped them in the rebounding department this year. Remember last year, they were almost minus seven in the rebound margin. That was dead last in the conference, 342nd in the country. This year, they're plus six and a half. That's second in the league and 42nd nationally. You know, they were 20 and 12 last year, despite probably the lack of depth. Uh, Four guys logged 31 plus minutes. Isaiah Joe, Mason Jones doing the most of it. And so the key... I think Coach Musselman, the key they thought was they had to have a great recruiting class. They had the fifth best recruiting class in the country. Moody, K.K. Robinson, who is out uh, for the season with a foot injury. Jalen Williams, Devo Davis, and then you add the grad transfers, Tate, Jackson Jr., and Justin Smith. I mean, they had to shore up the fact that they weren't deep enough last year. And, And maybe this season, as we come down, we're getting closer to February. Uh, you make a stretch run, get everybody healthy. Uh, I, actually, let's just go back to the other night. That win against Auburn to come back from 19 um, might have, I'm not saying saved the season, but probably turned them in the right direction. Yeah, you're, they're going to look back at the end of this year, and if things go well for them and, and as they are projected to be in the NCAA tournament as well, they're going to look back at that game, and maybe that's the one that got them over the hump. Uh, they're just doing some things that win ball games this year, right? They're second in the league in offensive rebounds, 13 and a half a game. That's top 20 in the country. They were not good at that a year ago. Loose ball on the deck, and Desi Sills comes out of there with it. 240 to play in this one. The good part is, Dave, we don't have to mic up Coach Musselman because we can hear him without a mic that's right i totally forgot we're not mic and coaches this year because we can <laughs> hear them quite clearly <laughs> in these empty gyms uh some coaches are uh, we're more eager to have the mic on than others and some so, we had to make sure that they knew because <laughs> right. yeah you have this mic on remember you have the mic on then we tell the assistant coach make sure you tell him he has this mic on uh, So Max Evans will head to the free throw line. Solid afternoon. Looking for his 10th point. Got it. 
Hey, tonight, the SEC Now team wraps up a full day of hoops with all the highlights, breakdowns, and interviews with players and coaches. 10.30 Eastern time, 9.30 Central right here uh, after number 19 Missouri and number 6 Tennessee on this network. And, of course, you can always catch it on the ESPN app. Florida and Georgia going at it in Athens. Florida leading by two with five minutes to go in that first half. Auburn already just uh, dismantled South Carolina. Went for over 100 points on the road in that win. Mm. Great pass. Nice. Yeah, Moody with a bounce pass to Desi Sills. Press handled easily by the Razorbacks. Half court set. Successful. One of the reasons because Desi Sills kept moving. Evans. Knocking home a three. His second three-pointer of the game, and Max came in, had just four for 23 from behind the arc. You know, we talked about Auburn going up over 100. I don't think anybody's going to catch Arkansas's number of 142 they put up in their opener this year <laughs> against Mississippi Valley State. That helps your averages the rest of the way, doesn't it? 142. Yes. Hogs averaging 84 and a half a game and sitting on 90 right now. Obina can't get it to go and the rebound into the hands of Vance Jackson. Under a minute to play. So, you know, if you kind of put a, a bow on this one, if you're Vanderbilt and Jerry Stackhouse, what are your takeaways from today as you try to put a positive spin on an 0-5 start in league play? Well, I thought I really I thought they played well. I mean, the thing is, they're, they're defensively they can't couldn't stop Arkansas. And if we're, if you're without one of your best players, and we've seen many of these teams this year without a great player, then you're going to struggle. And with Dylan DeSue out, that's nearly 17 points a game in SEC play, and he's a second leading rebounder in SEC play. So you're you're going to struggle a little bit with defensive rebounding and points on the offensive end. I thought his guys played hard. They just had no answers defensively for an active offensive Razorback team. Well, Arkansas has been very efficient offensively today. They now have 22 assists on 37 made baskets. They've won the rebounding battle, plus 10. They shoot 57%, 63% in the second half. A time now for you can pick a